Hello and welcome to this sixth tutorial video on how to make a button jointed ragdoll. I've got my threads hanging from my button joint. Like me you might have had to use a hardboard disc or something to make it a little bigger. And now I'm going to fill the head with small pieces of polyfiber. Of course you could use cotton or kapok or something like that. If you're using a recycled polyfiber make sure it's fire retardant. I'm using small pieces so that I can make sure they go right into the creases, the darts, so that the face rounds out and you don't get pockets. Now I'll speed it up. An awful lot of filling goes into this head, not like the the other doll where the majority of the filling goes in. There's, there's a lot of filling in the rest of the body of this doll but it still needs to be very firm to round out the shape. So keep working it in, keep checking that you've gone into all the creases, the little pieces of polyfiber at a time. And also keep checking that your button is in position and the polyfiber hasn't gone underneath it. You want that button to be flush against the neck gusset, the, the sort of bottom of the head gusset, so that when it sits on top of the neck gusset they sit tight together. And there will be an awful lot more polyfiber goes in here than you imagine. You can get a complete doll from most sofa cushions, most throw cushions. Keep working it in, pushing it in, keep checking that you don't have any pockets formed by the polyfiber and keep pushing it in with your thumb. I'm looking at the shape, it's still a bit soft there so I'll work that in a bit more. Starting to round out nicely. Because having washed your calico or medium weight cotton will have helped, especially if it's new, because it'll soften the fabric. If you're painting your face, your face probably has been completed by now. Mine is still in pencil because I'm just not sure what colouring she's going to have. Let's keep going with a bit more. That's, that's looking good. And still work it through those creases on the side there still so we'll keep working that in. You don't need any other tool than your thumbs to do this so it's really handy. Now I'm going to add just a little bit more around the bottom of the head to round it out. Just working it in, tuck it all the way around around at the back of the head now where I've created a hole where I've been pushing it in and then I'm going to close this opening using ladder stitch now that the head is complete we're going to attach it to the body I'm going to use a darning needle and pass the threads through the mark at the top of the neck gusset there. You can use a doll needle if you have one but anything with a reasonable sized hole. The darning needle is a bit of a cheat for me because it just means I can pass through two threads at a time. It just makes it a little bit quicker. And once you've passed your threads through the eye of your needle you can use the needle itself to make the hole a little bigger by just passing it in to the fabric and jiggling it about, it's a technical term, jiggling it about <laughs> and that eases the threads apart and makes it easier to pass not just this set of threads through but the rest of them alongside. My next two threads are fine. I'm passing the threads alongside the threads that are already through rather than passing the needle through the threads means you don't end up with it tangling and knotting so 
a reasonable sized hole there and you can lay the threads alongside each other. It doesn't really matter, it just makes it a little bit easier. So, there we go. Darning needles are quite blunt as well, so they're less likely to, to pass into the other threads. And again, I think I'll speed this up a bit now that I've shown you how to do that. It's always the last ones that are so awkward, especially when you're filming. And I think I'll do these last ones one at a time because I'm struggling a little bit with them. <laughs> Sometimes it's just easier to do it the slow way and quicker to do it the slow way. There we go. Done. So all of our threads are passing through the neck gusset into the body. We'll pull them tight. We want to make sure that, that that thread is passing straight the way through and I'll take the time to pull each of these threads to make sure that none of them are, are caught or bunched up. There we go. So all of them are tight. If you're using a hardboard disc, that goes on first. So pass your threads through the hole. It's quite a small hole, so I'm going to use the darning needle again. Really useful little tool. And all of the threads go through the same hole. It's the rough edge. There's a rough edge and a smooth edge on a hardwood disc, and the rough edge goes against the fabric. smooth edge out. That's so that the kind of patterned edge, it's not really rough, it's patterned edge or face, um, helps to grip against the fabric to stop it turning and rubbing constantly against the fabric. It kind of grips against it. More threads through. It's all threading with this doll, isn't it? And pass that through there. And the last two. So that all of our threads are now through. I'm now going to pass the threads through the button and the flattest face of the button will sit against the hardboard disc. This one's got a very slight curve on one face and I'm going to pass, because I have four holes in my button, I'm going to pass two threads through each hole of the button. It doesn't matter which two threads, any two threads through each hole. And the holes are big enough that I can just pass the threads through. So we can give the darning needle a break. She says, struggling. <laughs> Where's my darning needle when I need it? There we go. And the last two. So two threads through each of the four holes. If you've only got two holes, you pass four threads through each. And that button then will sit tight against the disc. We've got to make sure we Get all of the fabric out of the way so that hardboard disc is tight against the top of the neck gusset there. Make sure it's sitting flat. Make sure it's sitting centrally and that the, the seams are pulled around it too. So 
we get it into position pull the rest of the fabric of the neck up around it like that pull it tight and then I'm going to take two threads on one side and two threads on the opposite side so they're kind of diagonal and I'm going to tie them in a really firm knot two or three knots to make sure they're really secure and then the opposite remaining threads so that's two done there I'm going to do the other two Like that and that's done a nice neat joint on the neck make sure it moves and that the fabrics pulled around nicely now you can depending on the color of your threads mine are cream they won't show through the fabric but I still don't want them showing the texture of them or the shape of them showing through so I'm going to cut them a bit shorter and, and then we're going to ease all of this seam around to make sure that's nicely in position. And once I've done all that, I'm ready to start filling the body. Again with polyfiber in quite small pieces so that I can make sure I get it all into position and we don't cause pockets and lumps. So it's quite important that we fill this body quite firmly because once we button joint we're going to be putting a bit of pressure onto the body holding the arms and the legs in place and if the body's too soft then it's going to fold in and crumple and we're going to have a really odd shaped body with a little bit more filling a little bit fuller it'll hold its shape nicely so go to the extremities first, do the, the bottom, make sure that's full. And then we go up to the shoulders, make sure they're full. Keep easing little pieces in, like that. Very importantly, we're going to do the neck because that needs to hold quite a bit of weight, the weight of the head. So it's important that the neck is well filled. Keep moving it around, making sure you check for pockets, gaps, and working it into position. You'll see the crease is starting to round out on the body and have a feel. Just see, you'll feel if there are pockets. Get little hollow patches up into the neck more. That's very important. That's looking good. I think it could probably do with a little bit more on the shoulders there especially so that they don't pull in on a button joint. A little bit more, check all around for pockets and holes. That looks good. Make sure those limb positioning spots are good. And we're ready to close this seam up now with ladder stitch. That concludes our tutorial video. 
I hope it's been helpful. If it has, please subscribe. We'd love your feedback and a like. There are more videos coming soon.